cataract coach and we have an uncooperative patient here who doesn't want to look at the light. We can't even use the fixation ring to fixate the eye. But we'll make our paracentesis here. We're going to put some anesthetic inside the eye, preservative free, 1% lidocaine, diluted with balanced salt solution. And this patient also has Flomax use and he's going to have a lot of floppy iris syndrome. Let me show you how he manages these cases. Now in prior videos for these smaller or mid-sized pupils with Flomax, I've advocated doing a large rectus and then pulling the nucleus out of the caps or bag and having the iris or the pupil hold the nucleus in position and operating there at the iris plane. But we had a few comments from users of our site who said, hey, can you show me how to take care of this in the bag? Can I chop or disassemble the nucleus in the bag even if we have a Flomax case, a small pupil, a floppy iris, etc. So let's show you how we do that. So we have some viscomidriasis. Using viscolastic to enlarge the pupil as best we can. And even then, we're making the capsorexis bigger than the pupil. Look at that. You don't see the edge of the rexis anywhere. This is important. In this eye, we've measured this is about a 4 millimeter pupil to begin with. And we want a 5 or 5.5 millimeter rexis. So now we've achieved our nice capsorexis that's sufficiently large. This patient, of course, doesn't realize that it's a tough case and he just doesn't want to cooperate, but that's okay. Here's balanced salt solution on a blunt cannula, few fluid waves going across, and again, we're not going to prolapse the nucleus out of the bag. This patient's a high hyperope, though there's the iris already wanting to prolapse. High hyperope with a shallower anterior chamber, shorter axial length. There's not a lot of working room here. I don't think I can prolapse the nucleus out of the capsule bag. So let's leave it in the bag. Do enough high to dissection so we've really freed up the nucleus. And we can rotate it. A little more high to dissection the other meridian. I really want to make sure this nucleus is free and mobile. And again, the iris is already starting to prolapse at the incision there. So there it is. Rotate the nucleus a little bit. Not getting the best of rotation, but I think it's sufficient. A little bit of rotation, and that'll do it. So let's recoat the corneal endothelium with our dispersive viscoelastic. Let's protect the cornea. Get the phaco probe in the eye. High vacuum, high flow settings, moderate phaco power, high infusion pressure or bottle height. We're ready to chop. Phaco probe is going to go in the eye. We'll get the chopper in the eye as well. Put the eye in primary position here, and we're going to chop it right in the capsule bag. So buzz in with the phaco probe right about now. Advance the chopper together and apart, and there we go. We split the nucleus into two halves, bringing up the first half of the nucleus, emulsifying it in pieces at that iris plane, just taking our time there. We keep the other half of the nucleus in the capsule bag, so we've removed just about half the nucleus so far. Here comes the second half, bringing it up. If we can just feed it into the phaco probe, a little bit of a phaco power there, and that looks pretty good. There's a little epinuclear shell here. We should probably use the IA probe instead. So we ended up doing a hydrodelineation, separating that endonucleus. We used the phaco probe to remove that endonucleus. Now I'll take the IA probe. You can see these pupils come down even more so. This patient certainly is a strong history of Flomax use and certainly does have floppy iris syndrome or IFIS as it's been coined. Using the IA probe, let's try to get out this epinucleus as well as the cortex, taking our time. And as you can see, it's pretty thick. That's that epinuclear shell. We'll just take our time using high vacuum here, going around trying to loosen up this big epinuclear shell. Once we've loosened it up, the whole shell should come up and we can aspirate that quite efficiently. There we go, that's most of the epinucleus. And now we're just going to clean up the cortex. So we're using a coaxial IA probe here. A bimanual approach is also very effective. We'll show you a video of that. The bimanual approach for the smaller pupil allows you to get that subincisional area pretty well. Here I'm pivoting the eye out of primary position intentionally to access the subincisional cortex. That's why the eye drops down out of the view for parts of this procedure. So there we go. Most of that's removed. Still a little bit of cortex left. Again, I'm bringing the eye out of primary intentionally so we can access the subincisional area. That's about one of the few times that I like to get the eye out of primary. Clean up the capsule bag. That looks pretty good. 
Time to fill up the capsule bag with our cohesive viscoelastic. There's the cohesive filling up the bag, and you can see that also helps to expand the pupil. We can see a little bit of the rectus edge in some areas, and that's a nice big expanded pupil. Now, of course, this expansion is only temporary because the viscoelastic is holding it open. Let's get our single piece acrylic lens loaded into our injector, advance that. Let's go right in the capsular bag. Leading haptic, optic, there we go. And we'll get that trailing haptic in as well. Let's see if we can uh, dial that in just in the position we want. And make sure that both haptics and the optic are all completed within the capsular bag. That one sticky haptic will release it just like that. Now you can also tell that's optic has a six millimeter uh, diameter and you can see how small the pupil is. It's probably about a three or a, three and a half millimeter pupil now. Going under the eye well to remove viscoelastic. As we get all that viscoelastic out of the eye, the pupil will again come back down because nothing's holding it open. And this is maybe three and a half millimeters or so. And that looks great. So this patient's going to have a beautiful outcome and be quite pleased and uh, I'm happy we could achieve this without using any iris expansion devices. More iris prolapse there at the end. Push that back in the eye. Keep the AC pressure low while I seal up that main incision with the bounce salt solution back and forth. That looks great. Now going through the side port first, I like to wash out the angles. Make sure there's no retained viscoelastic or particles. Make sure the lens is where we want it. Now let's seal this up. And finally, our last step, we're going to use our sponges here to check the incisions, make sure they're completely watertight, and the case is over. So thank you for watching. I sincerely appreciate it.